Now I got something to show you, and it's gonna be something momentous. It's me, the excellent reviewer, and we are just removed from the Raw after WrestleMania, where literally anything can happen, and so much has happened just on the the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. So we're gonna break it down. Um, the show just started with the crowd just cheering for the Undertaker. They're saying, "Thank you, Taker. Thank you, Taker." And then Roman Reigns' music hits. Now, usually when this happens, there are some cheers, and there are mostly boos. But this was just something completely different. Everyone universally was just booing Roman Reigns. They just booed him so much. He was just there for his whole entire segment. He didn't say a thing until the end. And every time he put the mic close to his mouth, boo. Boo, tons of boos, everyone universally hates Roman Reigns. And the only thing that he says is, this is my yard now. Drops the mic, goes, continues to boo. Everyone is still enraged after having him beat The Undertaker. And it's just, right now I can't go into it because I'm going to get really emotional. And we still have a whole show to cover. So... The first match uh, of that of the Monday Night After Russell, WrestleMania was the Hardys against Gallows and Anderson for the Tag Team Championships. And it was just so great to see Matt and Jeff Hardy come back. Um, especially to have them be on top. And it looked like as though they were going to lose the Tag Team titles on multiple occasions. But they were able to retain them. And can I say how great it is. How great it is to hear those delete chants. How great it is. And the whole thing with everything, I was wondering if the Hardys would come back, is whether or not they're keeping the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. And how that factors into everything. Hint, hint for a future video. Um, but from what I hear and what I see, they're, they're still keeping the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. Because I, you could hear uh, in the final moments of the match where Matt is like, Nero! And he, he wants... Matt Hardy to tag, uh, Jeff Hardy to tag him in, and so they're still keeping that hair, so definitely I think it's a plus that they are keeping the broken Matt Hardy gimmick, along with Brother Nero. Um, after that we had, uh, Mustafa Ali against Neville. Neville begins the match, he's, he's giving a promo, and all of a sudden, I, th I thought this was kind of hilarious, because, uh, Neville's giving his promo, he's like, oh, I'm the best cruiserweight, and all of a sudden Mustafa Ali comes out, and usually when someone interrupts it, interrupts a promo, you either be really happy or you're really angry or any of those emotions. But that wasn't the case with Mustafa Ali. It was just quiet because they don't know who he is. Like he's just He just came out of nowhere. It almost seemed like they were just at the back. just like, just go, just go, just go. Because literally just as soon as Neville was cut off, it was just him. And he was just like, okay. And the crowd had literally no reaction. I thought that was really hilarious. Um, Mustafa more than holds his own in this match. I think definitely the cruiser rates are something that need to be uh, enhanced on, especially in this. And, it's, and there's this one part where Neville is about to hit the red arrow. He's on the top rope. And he does the most, one of the most heelish things he can do. Is he goes down, just puts in the rings of Saturn, just makes him tap out. I thought that was great. Great heel work from Neville. Neville wins that match. Phenomenal. Um... And all of a sudden, after that, here comes Mr. McMahon. Now, I'm wondering, what does Mr. McMahon have in store? What is he What is he doing here on Monday Night Raw? And it was great, the fact that as soon as he goes into, the, before he even says anything, the crowd just blatantly ch chants at him, Roman sucks, Roman sucks. They're just chanting at him because they know, they know that, that, that Vince loves Roman Reigns. So he starts off very solemnly. He's like, thank you guys so much for everything. And, and he promises that next week on Monday Night Raw, there's going to be a superstar shakeup between SmackDown and Raw. So that should be something to look forward to. And then he said, now that McFoley is gone 
and that Stephanie is injured and she's out with, a, with an injury, we need a new general manager. And then all of a sudden, holla, 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 here comes Teddy Long. And you think that Teddy Long is going to be our raw general manager, but he's all like, Vince is all like, you're not the general manager. And Teddy's like, my bad, holla, holla, one-on-one -on -one with the Undertaker. And our new general manager is Kurt Angle. What a great thing to have Kurt Angle come back. It's just like this This moment in time in WWE is really great to have Kurt Angle come back, especially to be Raw General Manager. And guess what? Jim Ross just signed a deal to come back for two years. Oh my God, how great is that? Kurt Angle, Jim Ross back together. Amazing. Just amazing. What a great way to start off the Raw after WrestleMania. After that, uh, New Day stand in the middle of the ring and they say, We are open. You are issuing an open challenge to all the tag teams, any tag teams in the locker room, to come on out to see if they can beat us. And you know who answers it? Just like last year, a tag team from NXT debuted, and that was the Revival. Yes, the Revival has made their NXT debut, and what a great way to just make a statement. They, they quickly knock over the, uh, the New Day's bicycle cart, ice cream cart, whatever that is. They just knock it over, and they have a really great match and <laughs> the revival show exactly why they're one of the best tag teams of all time going right now it's just great and they pick up the win against the new day one two three solidifying them as a permanent threat to the tag team titles and to the tag team division on monday night raw after that we had bailey sasha banks dana brooke against charlotte Nia Jax, and Emma. Emma, finally. She's finally here. She's, I don't know if this is the re-debut or her return, but she's finally here after tons of waiting of Emmalina will soon be here. Emmalina will soon be here in, in the following weeks. And now she's back, and now she's just back as Emma. So that's just great. I mean, that's just, that, that's awesome. Um, I thought that was cool because finally, you know, uh, the ending point of the match was where um, Sasha had countered the natural selection into the bank statement, uh, picking up a win for the for the baby faces. And Charlotte uh, gets mad at Emma and Nia Jax, starts pushing them around. Nia Jax then proceeds to destroy her, ah, just in the middle of the ring. And what a great way to end that match! What a great way to end that match. Um, after that, we had Brock Lesnar in a moment where uh, he has a segment, and Paul Heyman says to the people in the world, the people watching, you guys, um, that he wants Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns to go one-on-one. -on -one. Both men have beaten The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He wants both of them to go one-on-one -on -one with each other to see who truly is the best. And he says, so let, without further ado, let's get this on. Let's have... Let's have Roman Reigns come up, and then here comes Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman comes on. Michael Cole. Oh, my God. Oh, Michael Cole ruins everything. Um, and he basically says, yeah, like, as soon as you're done with Roman, keep in mind, you're going to have to come after me. And I want that NXT, when I say NXT, that Universal Championship. Issuing a challenge, Brock Lesnar lays the title down, and he's like, come and bring it. Brock Lesnar's confidence is really, really high at this point. So he's like, come on, I can take on anyone now. Anyone. And he, he's now that he's beaten Goldberg, his confidence is at, is at a record high. So definitely, definitely, this is going to be a match to look forward to. Um, Enzo and Cass, and so big Cass uh, against Cesaro and Sheamus, for the number one contendership to the tag team titles. Um, really good match, I thought it was. Um, but honestly, I don't agree with the opinion that Cesaro and Sheamus should win because I honestly feel as though it's Enzo Amore and Big Cass's time to not only be tag team champions, but to get that number one contendership spot. I think it's time for them to succeed. But I don't run the company. So Cesaro and Sheamus are the number one contenders, and they are going to be facing the Hardys 
at Payback, I believe. After that, Chris Jericho was going on talking about how, how Kevin Owens was only with a finger with a way of, you know, losing that match. Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens attack Chris Jericho. They just attack and destroy him. And Seth Rollins is left in a tag match. And just when it looks like it's a handicap situation, guess who comes back? Finn fucking Bala comes back. He comes back and he... I guarantee you, and I'll say this to you right now, that man has not lost a step in the ring. He does not have any sort of ring rust. He is at the top pinnacle of his point in his condition and in his career. And literally, he has not lost a step. I mean, honestly, what a great match. Finn looks like a million dollars. And he returns with a bang, hitting the coup de gras and pinning Kevin Owens. One, two, three. What a great way. What a great way to end Monday Night Raw. But guess what? That's not it. That's not it. One final moment between Bill Goldberg and the WWE Universe, where he basically says, this is my goodbye. This is my goodbye to you people. He's in the middle of the ring with his son. This is my goodbye. But, but, he says, you never know who's next. And then the music plays, and then for some reason he's all like, hold up, one more, one more, one more. I have to say one more thing. It's sort of like that one person, like, oh, I have this also and this thing and stuff like that. And he's all like, Never say never. What a great way to end Monday Night Raw. And honestly, what a great Monday Night Raw to have all of this happen. It's just a lot of things happened this Monday Night Raw. And how great is that to have this moment? Even though WrestleMania 33 was really good, it was what we needed after this man this man wrestled his final match. Just what a, what a great way. What a great way for Monday Night Raw to recover from WrestleMania and, and the fact that this man is no longer with us. Great Monday Night Raw episode. So that's been it for this episode of The Excellent Reviewer. Do me a favor. Let me know what you guys thought about this Monday Night Raw episode in the comments section below. I love hearing your guys' input on this. Uh, if you want to see more comments uh, like this, you check in the comment section. And if you want to see more videos like this, you want to hit, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe button. You want to do all that great stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. And, hey, I've been Samuel V, a.k.a. The Excellent Reviewer. And I will see you all as soon as I can.